Uh, hi everyone, thank you so much for joining the Fortinet and Reddington session. Uh, we have uh, Ravi, our PCS consultant from Reddington Value, who will be uh, running throughout the session. Uh, we hope we will provide you all the information required and you can go to the Q&A button on the left at the end of the session. We will answer all your questions. Uh, please, I request all of you uh, to uh, post uh, your all your email IDs uh, in the uh, Q&A. So the first three people uh, who complete the lab, they will win a gift voucher. Uh, regarding uh, the lab, uh, Ravi will give you all the details. Please send uh, uh, the email ID is in the chat button, so I can uh, send the lab guide uh, now to your email ID. Uh, Ravi, over to you. Yeah, and Ragda, do share the email once I finish the presentation. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ragda, can you see my screen? Yes, Ravi. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's session. Uh, my name is Ravi. I am a pre-sales consultant for Reddington Gulf, and it's been more than four years now I'm working in the Reddington. So today's agenda for the session is to give you the overview and uh, of the Fortinet Sandbox uh, product. So I will first give you the presentation on the product. What are the way by which we can detect the zero-day threats? Once we finish the presentation, then I will provide you lab access guide. So Ragda will share the information with you, how to access the lab. But for that, you will have to share your email address. Then only you will be able to access it. So if you have any question, uh, you can post it on the q and uh, chat window. And then once I finish the presentation, I will answer all of your questions. So first, the presentation, I will, it will last for 30 to 40 minutes. After that, we will have the time or approximately two hours to conduct the lab session, uh, workshop. And if you would want, I will extend the workshop time up to two hours. So you will have a maximum of four hours to complete all of your lab. So let's begin. So today's agenda of, for the presentation is to understand the technology that Fortinet Sandbox uses to detect advanced threat or zero day threat, different uh, input methods that Fortinet Sandbox supports. Uh, what are the ways by which Fortinet Sandbox, Forti Sandbox will determine the verdict, whether it's a malware or it's a good file. And lastly, how the Fortinet, Forti Sandbox share locally generated threat intelligence with the different solution that you have on prem. So before we start the introduction of the 40 sandbags, here's some of the information and the, uh, the study or the research that for one company conducted on behalf of Fortinet. And what we found out is uh, the breach is increasing uh, and it is taking longer and longer to detect when it actually happened. And according to survey that was conducted earlier this year, it took more than our approximately 61 minute to days to weeks or even months for almost more than 80 percent of the company that we have surveyed to detect that they have been breached so again these all are the enterprise company and they have best of the bridge solution still they got hacked so what is 40 sandbox it's a safe environment isolated from the corporate network that allows you to run code for testing purpose. Uh, in case of 40 sandbox, a sandbox, 40 sand, uh, the sandbox is a virtual machine with an operating system and application installed that replicate a user environment. And its purpose is to run a sample file which does not match an antivirus signature and monitor its activities to see if it exhibits any malicious behavior. And why do we need sandboxing? We have the anti-spam web filter, IPS, antivirus, and IP reputation technique, right? So these techniques are necessary for the protection, but it will not stop the most sophisticated attack today. They rely on identifying known attack, whether through signature, heuristic, or reputation methods. 
the danger comes when an attack is a brand new or is able to mark itself through a tunneling or encryption or other evasion methods and if you add sandbox to your security mix you uh, that gives you a layer of a protection that can detect malicious code even if it is previously unknown by uh, teasing it into a, exposing itself in a, in the sandbox and you can take an example if you are a hacker if you create a file today the, which is a bad file which is doing a something which you require so no antivirus uh, in the world is going to detect it by the signature base so again that is a, one of the main reason what you can do in a sandbox so again a uh, sandbox it's an expensive product it's it's not a cheap uh, each file is submitted to the scanning requires its own vm instance which it which in itself requires resources as well as a necessary license key so the question is it's replaced the antivirus no it does not because some file like flash pdf they do not contain version information and to generate a verdict this file requires sandboxing multiple times with multiple version of a software into multiple operating system and this can become an unnecessary problem if all submitted file must be sandboxed so if sandbox cannot determine a verdict using a av pre filter antivirus pre filter or a cloud query then the file is submitted to the sandbox so antivirus is again it's really important to detect a, a known file you cannot send all the file to the sandboxing and ask it to do the detection so that it will put a lot of load on the sandboxing and basically it will not be able to handle all the query at a time so again you require a traditional antivirus for the protection so fortinet sandbox is an appliance it's available in physical and virtual form factor also we are offering a cloud as well as a service so we uh, in in that we accept files and url from various input from fortinet and non fortinet products yes it accept the uh, inputs from the non fortinet devices as well it, then it analyze the sample using multiple engines and service which we are going to uh, discuss in detail we use both static and dynamic analysis technique and determines a verdict based on the result from the multiple engines that we have and once it's done we can share the newly discovered threat intelligence into a open standard format with fortinet and again a non fortinet device to act upon and we can deploy it in a cluster to support high volume of samples so fortinet sandbox this is a product portfolio it's available in hardware and also on azure and aws it's available and vm as well so this all the information which you can see here for example number of vm it supports what is the throughput and fsa-500f it supports uh, 600 files per hour so that much of file you can uh, process in the 500f and then the network which is a uh, network throughput which is used for the sniffer mode so then that's when when you can configure one port mirror and send all the traffic to the fortinet and this is the lab that we have as well for the sniffer so you will uh, we will be able to do the lab for the sniffer and this information is available on the website as well you can download it the data sheet uh, and to ensure that the sandbox solution that you are evaluating or the customer is evaluating has true detection and prevention capability so you should uh, vet them through the third party certification and the current recommendation uh, ratings from the trusted or out uh, to outside testing organization and one of the main companies or the organization is the nss lab which fortinet recommends the fortinet fortinet sandbox an area of evaluation should also include the total cost of ownership time to detect evasion and security effectiveness in both breach detection and breach prevention uh, fortinet is again give you the top rating in all the criteria 
forty nine percent box, and also when we uh, are in, uh, when we are evaluating, we should avoid a solution that receives a warning or other non recommended ratings from the third party organization like NSS Lab. Uh, so that is what forty nine uh, sandbox is as for all the product, not only forty nine sandbox for forty gate, forty mail, forty web, forty client. And again, Fortinet is the vendor which has received the recommended rating for all the different product in the market from the NSS lab. And on top of that, it's a ICS lab certified as well. Again, this is a non-profitable third-party organization which provides the certification to the security effectiveness of the product. So why customer choose Forty Sandbox? So this is one of the case study that I have uh, included here. So there should not be any surprise when our solution has been successful, successfully adopted across various vertical. So in this specific case, this is a large enterprise in the energy segment, energy sector, which was struggling to scale advanced threat detection outside of the data center, and with their existing sandbox vendor, it was not uh, good enough to handle all the detection because in uh, integrate into the existing parameter security across the various location was difficult with their existing uh, sandboxing solution so 40 sandbox was selected since it natively integrated with the with their all existing 40 gate infrastructure to automate protection against advanced threat thus it reduced the reliance on the limited set of SOC resources and for the scale of the ATP solution required, 40 Sandbox VM virtual machine allows this organization to easily scale up to 792 40 Sandbox instances through clustering. This is a feat which was not possible with their existing Sandbox vendor due to various reasons, like of course the cost and the complexity that involved with the management. And this is again one of the customer in Center Financial Institute. They continue to face a constant phishing campaign and have spent a huge resource in remediating the endpoint as many as 10 PCs or a laptop a day. So they were desperate in tracing the source of this compromise uh, back to target email and through POC. And we have done the POC there and validated our. SEG solution security email gateway uh, to achieve best catch rate with the lowest false, false positive. And thus they decided to upgrade to 40 net for 40 mail augmented solution with 40 sandbox. And this combination was very successful in reducing the number of compromised system and also overburned it reduced the overhead on the IT support stuff as well. And then this is again a third case study that is there. So this company provide online COVID. And for this organizations, it's a ability to connect employer and potential candidate via platform that allows the transaction of standard document. However, uh, these documents need to be sanitized. So it does not become a malware breeding ground or a launch fair for the targeted attack. So you can imagine there was one portal where all the customer upload one document into the web server repository. So 40 web acting as a front line protection to the web application and backend storage for analyzing all document and blocking known exploit malware and anomalous behavior. And 40 sandbox ensures zero day and advanced malware in the block. And this is the last case study that I have included. Uh, it's a national defense organization. They were looking to solve then. Uh, so it was a management uh, of the various best of the breed product that they had and working in a desperate fashion and uh, concern of effect, uh, effecting a quick threat response. So operation are secure and unhindered. That means they have multiple different, different product which they claim it's a best of breed product. Uh, the three vector of the concern in this uh, customer is securing and locking down their web network traffic, email communication, and the military laptops. 
Fortinet uh, again a proven solution consist consisting of 40 gate, 40 mail, 40 client gave them strong integrated coverage that included the automated sharing of sandboxing intelligence that is out of the endpoint to lock the doors and it left it was left open by previous best of the breed product so again 40 client can also be integrated with the 40 sandbox and that is where you can get the maximum protection for the end machines so now we are going to i will going to discuss about the engine and the service that 40 sandbox uses in uh, to detect any malicious malware so these are the techniques but before the techniques we have the different component as you can see on the left side here we, by which we can get an input of of the any file or a url that you want to detect so you can integrate with the sniffer 40 gate devices network share file bcc adapter which we are going to do a lab as well then on demand manually also you can do the uploading of a file onto fortinet uh, 40 sandbox component and url detection manually you can again import the thread or fetch the information from the third party uh, for like fabric component like a uh, aws and then you can have the information into the 40 sandbox and these are the different techniques on the middle table which is again we are going to discuss in detail why we use each technique and what is the uh, parameter of that and on right side you can see the 40 sandbox uh, community cloud our distribution network or 40 guard threat intelligence repository which requires for the rating and the cloud query engine and this is where from where we get an update for the different different file so first is the file filter it is that is the first end component so again file filter determine the sample type of a, a sample file type the file filter also submit the sample into appropriate scan job uh, based on the scan profile configuration after 40 sandbox has uh, determined the file type the sample is checked against the uh, cached verdict on 40 sandbox to see if there is any existing verdict for the sample and th this is also where 40 sandbox applies uh, the black and white list configuration and any existing overridden verdict the next the file is submitted for the static analysis scan where spe specialized scanner analyze the behavior of the sample as well as extract embedded object for the further analysis a code emulation is applied to simulate the intent activity of any embedded script or macros so again the macros is one of the i have separate slide for macros as well and, and then embedded url again they are extracted and check against the our rep, uh, blacklisted ip addresses which is 40 guard url and other ip reputation database we have and in this step since malware is not being run in the sandbox uh, any evasion or ant, uh, or anti debugging technique built into the malware will not affect the static analysis scanner from discovering a malware activity so this is the way the first three technique that we use uh, in the next step 40 sandbox employ the 40 guard antivirus engine which utilizes fortinet's uh, patent content uh, pattern recognition language uh, that is cprl in this and attempt to identify a malware type behavior within the file so what does this cprl allow it allows one signature to match many different code variation of the same malware so they might try to trick you hacker might try to trick the any security device by just putting the variable into the each file so that each will be have different different pattern but we can detect that with cprl and this keeps the signature database small allows efficient pattern matching 
the antivirus engine also applies code emulation to identify uh, poly, uh, polymorphic code then the 40 sandbox community cloud is a database of sample and word data collected from other fortinet sandboxes device around the world so you have option to share the intelligence with the 40 uh, fortinet database that if you have detected anything on premise you can share it with the community but again it's optional it's not mandatory so if uh, if any of the customer has any uh, question they don't want to send anything outside it's again you can disable that option so the data will not go outside so what will happen a checksum of the file is sent to the 40 sandbox cloud uh, community cloud and is checked against the database if a verdict is generated using an up-to-date AV engine, the 40 sandbox uh, uses the verdict as is in otherwise 40 sandbox passes the file to the next process. And what is the next process is the sandbox pre-filter. Now the pre-filter can further reduce the number of file and URL that are submitted to the uh, for the sandboxing. That means to the virtual machines. For example, uh, let's say a PDF file. So PDF file doesn't contain any script. It does not need to be scanned. Therefore, that file would be filtered out by the sandbox pre-filter process. And you will learn more about a sandbox pre-filter in later in this uh, session. For each file that requires sandboxing, that means to send to the virtual machine, 40 sandbox generate a new VM instance and start execution and starts the execution of the file. And as the file is executed, a tracer engine monitors a wide range of behavior, including a system file being modified or deleted. At the, for example, another is the registry key being created or modified or deleted, a new file or process being generated, a web URL being accessed for command and control. Uh, they might try to connect to the IP address on the internet. And the tracer engine follows all the recorded activity to the rating engine for verdict and report generation. So once the file is uh, submitted for the rating, it analyzes the tracer engine's information. Uh, connection attempt to any URL are check against our 40 guard web filter database. All IP connection attempt are check against the 40 guard IP rating database to determine if a known command and control server. Uh, hashes for the file generated during the analysis. Again, it's submitted to the 40 sandbox community cloud to query for any existing verdict. Then the hash also checks against another database called 40 guard cloud-based threat intelligence database and this database is a repository of threat with feed from uh, the cyber threat alliance and other threat alliance, uh, intelligence sharing sources that fortinez is partnered with so we have different different partner by which we get the threat intelligence report and after the analysis is complete the rating engine generate a verdict all files can in 40 sandbox, uh, they, they can put it into the three category. We can put it into the three category, malicious, suspicious, or clean or unknown. It's both same. So malicious files are of course 100% known malware. File are rated as suspicious, can have three severity level, high, medium, or low level. And 14-net devices such as 40 mail can make granular decision based on this severity levels. The clean rating is assigned to any file, uh, any file that do not match any known antivirus signature or a cloud query verdict or display malicious behavior during a sandboxing. An unknown rating is assigned to any file the sandbox cannot process before the scan timeout expire. Maybe it's a huge file, 100 MB file or something, or maybe a password protected file, something like that. This could be, uh, all again, We uh, it could be because the resources being available to generate a new VM instant for the 
uh, we are scanning is also not available and fortinet will try to reprocess the file at later time when the resource become available finally the rating engine generates a report with all details collected by the tracer engines uh, this report is also again available to download and we have taken uh, existing 40 sandbox behavior analysis and enhances with the ai that is artificial intelligence so entire ai infrastructure just like our other security service are hosted in the cloud and the learning process for the ai start with the foundation of known malware indicator and is then fed with a continuous data set from various intelligence whether it's internal resource or external or external source and clean suspicious uh, known object are inspected in both static and behavioral engine so in behavioral engine uh, mi is applied to determine the uh, behavior of the indicator whether is doing any malicious activity and the rating engine calculates the object based on static and behavior engine scoring the the algorithm that the machine learning uses it tagged with all the rating that we have scored here and this is again a report that you can get i will have one different slide separately for the reporting purpose how you can get all the information uh, and as more simple exhibit the if any file is uh, have a same new behavior our ai optimize the weightage of a newly discovered indicator of capture uh, indicator of captured the frequency and trend and reclassify them as a stronger or weaker indicator so this is how the ai algorithm is works again this improves the overall threat detection and effectiveness of newly sophisticated malware by 20 percent and all 40 sandbox form factor including hardware virtual or a 40 cloud service and a native pub benefited from this ai enhancement so intelligence sharing as uh, i will already uh, discussed that you can do it with fortinet devices so the malicious and uh, suspicious file information you can share with the sandbox community on the cloud uh, the file checksum tracer log verdicts and original file are uploaded so again it's optional not mandatory malware downloading url can be submitted to the fortinet web filter services so we will share it with the fortin fortinet community and second is within the organization that means uh, all the file that 40 sandbox has detected as malicious can be shared with all the on-prem devices or any fortinet devices which are connected with the sandbox via malware and url package and the second thing is with non fortinet device you can do it manually or via json api now so let's talk about now input method by which we can send a file to the 40 sandbox so as you can see we can do this with of course all the fortinet product like 40 gate 40 web 40 mail 40 client 40 switch and third party integration is also available through icap and carbon black is also there then you can integrate the network sharing path as well for which we have the lab again and bcc adapter is also there so these are all the different different method by which we can do the uh, input feeding into the sandbox and it is capable of scanning the file for malware from different sources the common method for of deploying a 40 sandbox is integrated with another fortinet devices uh, in this setup the device submits file directly to the 40 sandbox and this integrated deployment can inspect and mitigate potential malware uh, in ne near real time so that means you will have the uh, information of the malware very quickly and 40 sandbox can accept input from again all the fortinet product or you can do the manual uh, upload on the 40 sandbox as well 
of the file or the URL that is called on demand at any time from the FortiGate GUI itself or using a JSON API, which can or it's for use for the automation of the process for uploading the samples. The concept of the ATP is again to detect new threat as early as possible. So let's move to the analyzing the result and how we identify the malware. So there are some common characteristics of the malware. So 40 sandbox look for the malware trait when it analyzes the file. In order to understand the result uh, from the analysis of the sample, we must first understand the common characteristics of the malware. It can be a persistent, that means even if you reboot, it comes again. It can replicate itself, uh, creates or modify the Windows system directory, it deletes itself to hide from the analyst when the forensic is uh, forensic will happen so that analyst will not have any information, sorry, for any information because file has deleted itself, might try to visit a malicious website to download any script or any malicious code. Uh, it can download additional file or disable your own antivirus. So these are the different different techniques uh, and most importantly ransomware which does the mass encryption now again some of this behavior it can be associated with the malicious or non-malicious software for example like a, a windows update for example let's say when you do that it might try to change the directory or the file into the windows system file so again that is a genuine file it is not a harmful file harm, harmful file so again um, anyway this is to give you the information about the characteristics of the malware so how does the malware get onto the system in the first place that is again most important you might be aware the most common method but i'm going to discuss about the further targeted attack or the very com uh, unknown zero day attack so there are multiple attack vector to accomplish this. Two common ones are the social engineering and the second one is the drive by download. So in social engineering is the attack which tries to manipulate user into doing something. Uh, for example, let's say they try to get the user to open a one malicious attachment or click on the embedded URL link in the email. Again, there is a different way by which they can come in via email. And with the uh, end result of getting the user to infect the system. Uh, this email with the malicious attachment or the embedded URL, it can be sent to the user during a spam campaign, which is an opportunistic attack or by a phishing or sphere phishing into the targeted attack, which is most common way. You might have um, read the different studies by different organization where which says that more than 80 to 90 percent of the breach it starts with the email yes uh, so come again that is one of the way by which they can get into the network then the drive by download uh, is another attack vector where user system can be infected by visiting a website which is in the background it redirects the browser to a malicious site that downloads the code and it will be so uh, transparent that user will not even be aware of it and usually that download it's in the form of javascript and try to exploit either their web browser or web browser plugins which has some vulnerability that's how they get into the network uh, again this is uh, exploiting a document so this is a uh, my microsoft office document this can be exploited by embedding a malicious macros that will ultimately download and run the code now macros are simple script which is written in the visual basic uh, to accomplish some of the function of the automation <coughs> excuse me and modern version of the microsoft office have macros disabled by default and require user to explicitly allow to run. This does not require an vulnerability to uh, to be exploit. It only require user to be tricked into running it. So second option is that there is a vulnerability in how Microsoft Office 
handle a document uh, such that attacker can craft a document uh, to exploit the vulnerability if there is any vulnerability and have their code executed uh, this still require the user to open the document so far uh, there have been every year you will see the different vulnerability for the microsoft office which you can find out into the website that how many vulnerability has been identified and generally the numbers remains on the higher side more than 75 to 80 it will be every year that they find found the vulnerability into the office and likewise pdf file are structured document that contain both static and dynamic element such as javascript and pdf reader can be exploited in many different way uh, one of the way is by embedded javascript again you will hear javascript more and more it can javascript can trick the user into allowing it to download and run malicious code and can also be crafted to exploit a vulnerability into pdf reader and allow the attacker attacker's code to run and again every year there will be hundreds of vulnerability that you will find at the end of the each year that uh, adobe acrobat reader will find the vulnerability into the pdf reader and again they report it into the website that how many has been find which we can go on to the website and check it and on top of that here just for example here you will get the this is the vulnerability and what is the detail of it which you can get, uh, find out uh, this is a, a example of the again a attack that fortiga team has detected uh, analyze it and published it on the blog as well i can sh i will share the link for the uh, this specific attack which we have analyzed so this example of uh, this macro is requesting the user permission to run the first uh, back diagram which you see on the back end of the microsoft office uh, again this both samples are taken uh, from the malicious sample user first need to enable the edit editing you might have seen it if you download the file from web or uh, email it will ask you to enable the editing as this is a security feature right when the file is uh attribute has the mark of the web so once you do that then to run the macros the user need to click on the enable content button so even instruction is provided as you can see open the document uh, or pre previewing online is not available for the protected document and this is the information which is already they have with this specific hacker has published in this page and the malware wall was spread via this document that contain an auto executable malicious uh, the vba code word and once you click on enable content button this code is executed uh, in the background and this is how the bad actor tricked the user by using a macros inside the document and again the same is there for the excel file here once they click on the enable content the code will macros will be automatically executed in the background now we will talk about the analysis of the verdict when actually fortinet analyze the file so there are multiple ways to get access to the uh, scan job reports as you can see on the left side you have the option for on demand whether it's a file or url you can go and check the result there then you have the uh, file detection uh, method on the file scan again click on and we can click there and get the all the detailed report so when we know the characteristic of the malware some of the common ways that it lands on the user system and the characteristic of the script used to deliver uh, we will able to see how it actually determine by, by analyzing a sample and you can also do the uh, email setup where you can alerts whenever we find any uh, alerts the admin whenever we find any uh, suspicious email a uh, suspicious file so that administrator will be able to know instantly on top of that we have 40 view which gives a detailed reporting and snmp and traps and the syslog alerts so this is by way we can analyze the verdict so let's look at the one of the 
a file which has been sent to the for example this email address via alert email so this uh, security analysts are likely to get alerts on suspicious activity which is again a best practice and it includes the summary view of all information about file how it was obtained its rating what is the suspicious action it has performed and the url which will take you directly to the view detail of the analysis once you click here it will give you the detail of the analysis and here you will analysts will get all the information so 40 sandbox is shows detail forensic information of any specific job uh, here you can see on the top right side there are three parts one is overview second one is tree view and second third one is the detail so overview part uh, shows overall information about job including uh, input source can condition uh, rated by for example vm engine uh, what is the input that is submitted by 40 gate then indicator of malware that what we have what what are the reason why we have identified this file as a malware and what was the file name here you can see on top right side the link from where the file was actually downloaded what is the service that has been used again what is the submitted device and all the information here you will get it on the overview page and again this is the high risk downloader so this file has been identified by the high risk uh, if we look at the second tab which is a tree view again it is a great representation of the how the process was actually occurring when this file was executed it shows the tree for a file file static structure or, or you can say files parent child process relationship when it executed inside the guest vm uh, you can even drag a tree using the mouse and zoom in or zoom out using the mouse wheel that you will do when you actually do the labs and send a file for the uh, to the sandbox you can go to the tree view and see how the process actually occur and if it, there is any suspicious activity with one tree node uh, it's label with a color red so here you can see these top three on the top side this is a uh, label in the red color that means it indicate there is some suspicious activity and what you see in the black color it's not suspicious so this is the way by which you can actually identify that whether what the detail analysis was going on and the finally uh, here the scan result detail so again this detail part uh, it shows the analysis detail for each detection os that is uh, launched during the scan so here you can see this win 7x86 this is the vm which was launched to actually execute that file again if required 40 sandbox might launch multiple vms as well and you will have the multiple vm tab or the os tab here so this is how you will get all the information about the specific file into the detail logs and you can then move your mouse to the different tab and get the information about the each file and lastly this is mitre it's a government funded research organization uh, and it stands for AT, att and ck it stands for advisor uh, tactics techniques uh, and common knowledge so again it was started back in 2000 13 to give you the uh, full information and the, uh, about the zero day threats it this is a metric that maps the technique to the different stage of the attack or what the threat actor is trying to accomplish and 40 sandbox maps the characteristic observed when analyzing a sample to this framework so for example you can see that there is a uh, we have indicator of persistent then the discovery then the division uh, defense evasion lateral movement command and control so this is what we have identified for this specific file now once we identify the file we have the result the next job is to distribute the threat intelligence which is really important because 40 sandbox give you the ability to share the local threat intelligence which it has determined 
uh, with the enforcement device this is the beauty of about the 40 sandbox and if you have attended the session last week we have already done the fast track for the fabric in which we actually integrated 40 sandbox with the different device to for push the policy automation for any suspicious behavior now here when the malware pack this malware package you can see here is consists or uh, consist of a file hashes of the file found to be suspicious or malicious that was what we have found uh, if you are using the uh, stick format uh, it can also include the behavior and the risk risk level of the samples included in the package and the duration that is how many days the sample remain in the package is configurable so this is what we can get and the malware package uh, it can be shared automatically with the devices or assessed via json api or manually download as a plain text or in the stix format so again this is really useful for the automation and to share the intelligence with the on-prem application or any Fortinet product that you have integrated. And when the malware package is, uh, is for files, uh, the URL packages is for URL found to be suspicious. So there is a difference between the malware, uh, malware package and the uh, URL package. The risk level of the sample included in the package and the duration that is how many days again the sample remains in the package is configurable so this is all the information we have and how you can share this information with the specific fortinet product so in summary uh, this is uh, what we have discussed is the technologies and the or you can say scan engines that fortinet sandbox uses to detect advanced attack or zero day attack different method which 14 sandbox supports again there are which is uh, there is a workshop for this input method which will help you to actually automate the this uh, process that how 40 sandbox detect this and how 14 it determines its verdict by analyzing the behavior and how it can share the local generated threat intelligence so again this sharing is really straightforward uh, you just need to enable the option into the different different fortinet product or even third party and you will be able to use the this locally uh, generated share uh, threat intelligence with all the fortinet or third party product so this is about the presentation now uh, we can quickly go to the workshop and start doing the workshop so i hope everyone has shared their email address but before that going into the workshop um, let me know if you guys have any query into this so we can answer that and you can unmute yourself as well if you want to have the conversation How many attendees we have? 21, okay. Okay, let's say, is there any question? Hi, Ravni. Yeah. Farhan with you. Yeah, Farhan, how are you? Good, I'm good, buddy. Uh, I think, uh, Hetham, uh, Hetham you, you told me you would like to add something over here, okay, before we go for the workshop. Share your feedback. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, of course, Ravi. There are some points I need to highlight. It. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Haisim Al Dusri. I am Fortinet uh, Channel System Engineer. Um, thanks all for attending this session today. Um, there is some point I need to highlight it regarding to 40 Sandbox. First, uh, about the rating, the rating came from our team. Uh, they are 40 guard team. They are more than 300 engineer. Specific rules for um, reverse engineering, middleware reverse engineering, and uh, AV analysis, IBS analysis. They all focusing in engineering for the content of all 40 guard update that um, that update all our uh, security fabric solutions. So this is the point number one. Point number two. There is 
some unique features about our um, FortiSandbox solution. It's uh, its ability to upload your um, binaries inside the FortiSandbox. For example, if you have uh, some file in your USB and you need some analysis for this file, you can you can upload it on demand in the solution and you get full uh, full analysis report. Most of our competitors they don't have this feature except one of them, but it's required to buy another solution for a specific this feature. So we have the box all in one. You can upload any file that you want to analyze and you'll get full report, include the micro attack. Um, another feature is called the file reconstruction. Uh, as Ravi said, some attackers now using um, Java and uh, Java, Java applet and macro attacks that inside the office files. We have some feature called the uh, file reconstruction. For example, if you enable this feature, anyone send you uh, files that contain Java or macros, the Forty Sandbox can reconstruct this file and remove the Java or um, or or macro. Uh, it's all up to the organization policy in the end. And um, for sandboxing VMs, our sandboxing include many VMs inside, like Windows servers, Windows XP, even Windows 7, um, Linux, Android, and uh, Mac OS. But Mac OS, it's cloud-based because Apple doesn't allow us to run Mac, uh, Mac OS inside any solution. This is all from all the vendors, this information. So for, uh, for any... DMG uh, extension for uh, Mac OS files, it, it's a cloud based in the end. It's not uh, on prem. Okay, also you can import your own customized VM and you'll have full support from 40, 40 gate. So if you have like a, a Windows Server, customized Windows Server, you can import this to 40 Sandbox and you'll have full support from 40, uh, 40 net. And the beauty about uh, 40, 40 net solutions, the security fabric, that you have full integration with all the solution in our portfolio. For example, if you have some, um, some incident has been uh, issued by 40 sandbox, immediately it will update the 40 get firewall. If you have, of course, 40 get firewall, and they will create the rule automatically to block this callback, for example, or any malicious IB that came from Vertex from files that has been analyzed by any of our solution, like ADR, uh, 40 Sandbox. Uh, this is the beauty really about uh, 40, 40 net, the security fabric that you can integrate all together. If, uh, if some solution get updates, this update will push to all the solution in your network, even in the cloud. Um, of course, we have, uh, we have a certification for Sandbox. Um, it's NC7. Uh, NC7 ATB. It's a, a multiple choice exam. Uh, you can uh, you can find it in uh, person view, and also now you can take it online. Um, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Hitam. Anything welcome. else, Farhan? Yeah. No, good for my side. We can go for the lab now. So, Ragda, I hope you got an email address of everyone, right? Yeah, still remaining only five. Uh, so okay, you can send uh, it to I, others. I shared, uh, yeah, I already shared the lab guide as okay. well as I shared the email IDs to you. Okay, fine. I want to say hi to uh, Farhan, Faisal, and Haisam. Hi, how are you? Uh, thank you for joining. No, no, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you for arranging. I hope it's, uh, it's uh, beneficial for all the attendees. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Ragda, you can, uh, we will wait if anyone is there who is who has not shared the email address. They okay. will have to share the email address here. Then only they can access the lab. 
Yeah, I want to add one thing. There will be three winners who complete the lab. They will have like a, uh, a valuable gift. So uh, please, there is uh, five more remaining ID. Okay, so still four. Now Hamdi shared his email ID. So still four. Okay, fine. Okay, yeah, fine. I will start now about the windows. So, guys, uh, this is the lab uh, topology that you have, and I have already shared the PDF. I'm I'm sure Raghav shared the PDF file with all of you, in which we have shared the lab uh, this topology. So you don't have to navigate into the lab again from one tab to another tab. So what I will suggest you, if you have any other uh, second screen or a tablet kind of product so it's better that you open this lab guide or uh, a pdf file into that so you don't have to navigate into the lab guide again and again so this is how the lab guide looks like the 40 gate is uh, connected to the internet via linux router we then we have the dmz in which there is a 40 mail the mail transfer agent at the linux server it's all in the dmz then we have the 40 sandbox which is connected to the dmz via reform mode and port 3 it is directly connected to the internet so this is again we need to give the internet access to the 40 net for the threat intelligence sharing and the license update and in this scenario we are not using the 40 manager here you can do that via 40 manager if it's a closed network but here in this lab it is directly connected to the internet and this is the Windows client, and you will have one Jumbox server by which you will access everything. So make sure that you take a copy of this from the PDF file so you understand the network topology. And once you get the link from the Ragda, just click on it. You will have need to have the partner portal access or uh, uh, training portal access. So even if you don't have, you can create it. Uh, within the few seconds and you will be up to go. So you don't create a partner portal access if you don't have right now. You can create a portal with your personal email address so that you will be able to access the lab. And provide the, I have already shared the class class passphrase which needs to be put here into the cloud share environment. So once you click there, well, log in into the training portal, it will redirect it to the cloud share. And this is where you need to provide your email address and the uh, passphrase which is already all the instruction is already there on the pdf file how to do that give your name then you will get this screen here so what i will suggest you what you need to do is to open the 40 field lab guide so now again the 40 field uh, this is a lab guide in it is a, it's a software into the kiosk mode so guys please uh, uh, take a note of this it's into the kiosk so once you open the lab guide which is there on the desktop it will open into the kiosk mode so then you won't be able to do anything so if you get stuck there into this lab guide which you need to press Control k to minimize the uh, lab guide which is into the kiosk mode press Control k which is very important and you can restart the application which is there and then again it will resume the work from where you have left so here is the tab where you can see all your vm this is a 40 field lab guide and you will have the jump box server from which you will do all the configuration all your 40 gate 40 sandbox it is accessible from the browser and the bookmark is already there so make sure that you open the browser and username and password is provided into the lab guide. Yeah, Ravi. Yes. There is uh, one question uh, from Badr. He's saying, do you meant connected to FortiGate on separate port and then create policy from the FortiGate to allow this port to access the internet? Let me check what can is you the question. Meant to meant connected to the 40 on separate port and then create a policy from 40. 
no you don't have you don't need to change anything into the 40 gate the lab guide is already pre configured what you need to do yeah lab guide i will share i will give you information how to access the lab guide so don't change anything into the 40 net what we need to do we need to open the 40 field application i will just show you once the presentation is finished just bear with me for the five minute so here you can see once you log in into the cloud share there is a tab for the 40 field lab guide so click on that tab and in that tab you will have the 40 field lab guide it's a software which is available on the desktop itself i will show you on my portal and jump box server from where you can access all the 40 gate so again guys don't configure anything which is not mentioned in the lab guide just do what is there in the lab guide step by step and you will be able to configure all the labs pretty easily you won't face any issue again the full screen button you can of course do the full screen button and go into the mode where you can access everything like you it's your machine this is the 40 field interactive lab guide so this is what you need to do here you can see 40 field lab guide tab click on this and then you will have one icon of the 40 field uh, on the desktop it will be of the red color click double click on that icon and it will ask you for the name just provide your name click on ok and this is how it will look like so this is again it will open into the kiosk mode so if you get stuck or the application is hanged press ctrl k to get out from the full screen okay so this is where you will be able to access the lab 40 field lab guide and these are the tasks which i will show you what we need to do and there will be some question and answer so with each step i will give you the demo of how to interact with the 40 field lab which is very important again you can adjust the view of it right so this is the one thing which i recommend you can Put the screen if you don't have any screen you can put the two screen in the cascade form or the vertical form whatever you would like and then you will have one screen for the 40 field lab guide and the second one is the jump box server where you will do your configuration you can right click on the tab and click on the duplicate to open the same tab again that is also what you can do then again this is some adjustment that we need to do and all this information about the keyboard layout is there in the pdf file which Rakda has shared so refer to that file if you want to change anything into the keyboard whether it's a windows machine linux machine which is it's not there but again if it ask I, if it ask you for that you can change it uh, so if you want to access the any machine directly RD, via rdp client on left side on bottom you will have external address here so this is the url by which you can directly access the machine through rdp client windows rdp client here yeah. you can do that as well so again it's based on your preference if you want to access via browser or via rdp client then you can choose and here you what you need to do you, once you've done that you need to I will exit and I will go to the jump box server and here I will connect to the all my 40 gate devices here you can see 40 field lab guide on your login screen whether you have after log logging you will have the different different tab so you need to click on the 40 field lab guide once you click there it will ask you for the student information name that you need to provide and once you provide and click OK, you will be open. You will be able to open this lab. So this is how you will get this information. So click on the 40 field lab guide, and from there you can access the lab guide and then configure the different different devices accordingly.